done it. Okay. So hi. Hi. To nice start, to it is mm -hmm. nice to see you. Mm -hmm. um, to start, would you like to just say your name and where you are? Okay, my name is Noriyoshi Okada, and I'm in Yokohama, Japan. Okay. And the first question that we have in this uh, conversation is, who are you as a person, as a human being? And you can answer about your values, your interests, your passions, whatever you'd like. Hmm, who I am as a person? Um, I am a Japanese and um, my hobby is gestalt therapy. <laughs> yeah, and I like working with people. And um, I think I am um, a very good therapist. And I love traveling. Hmm. And um, well, I enjoy my life. Hmm. Well, I think that's the best thing to enjoy my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. How how do you enjoy your life? What does that look like or feel like for you? Ah, uh, well. There are, you know, a uh, lot of things that uh, happens uh, in my life, a, a lot of things. And I've been living for six, 69 years now. And I have uh, very exciting uh, experiences and um, interesting experience and sad experience and in a boring experience. And all, all that is my life, and I love it. Okay. Your microphone turned off there for a moment. Um, ah, you still there. Okay, so the next question that I have is, uh, I guess, within this life of yours, can you or do you identify a particular event or a set of circumstances that have really influenced who you are as a person? Yes, um, in my uh, early 20s, I went to England. And I meant to study English there. Um, but most of the times I uh, didn't go to school. <laughs> and I, you know, uh, had a lot of friends and I think it was um, my, what do you say, well, that was the very best time for me hmm. and I enjoyed uh, living in England and I enjoyed, you know, uh, being with my friends and I had uh, uh, well, I just enjoyed it, and that inf influenced me quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is um, my meeting with uh, Paula Baton. Uh, she was um, a gestalt therapist, mm -hmm. and I worked with her. I mean, I uh, acted as her interpreter for three or four years. Mm. Um, that changed my uh, life uh, very much. Mm. Yeah. I decided to learn gestalt therapy and mm, I was uh, with gestalt therapy for you know, 33 or four years now. Mm. So that's uh, two, big, two big events for me. Mm -hmm. And how did meeting um, Paula and being the interpreter, how did that change you? Well, um, changed the quite, quite a lot. Well, I was um, 
as well let's say I, I was a thinking man mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. I didn't feel or sense what I'm feeling or I, I was sensing and once um, when I was when Paula was working with me I drew a picture yeah a head and body and they didn't connect mm. but um, um, working as her interpreter um, uh, this connection was made and I began to feel things yeah that was quite a big change for me mm -hmm. so another question is maybe it's Paula but maybe it's someone else um, do you identify a particular person who has really influenced you in your life? Um, Paula was the uh, biggest one, and and also uh, my present wife. Hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, we met about twenty years ago. Hmm. And uh, then you know um, we well we uh, both uh, uh, you know um, had a divorce once, mm. and you know um, she's a really um, capable woman. Uh, woman so. <laughs> Yeah, she's very capable. <laughs> well, she's much cleverer than me. And how has being with her or sharing your life with her affected you? Um, one thing is that um, she taught me how to enjoy working. Mm. Well, she, she's a therapist too, mm -hmm. and we work together now. Mm -hmm. mm. And she's really, um, she's really good at enjoying her life. Mm. Mm. And before I met met her, um, I, well, I liked uh, working. But you know, um, I thought enjoying my life, uh, playing or being with my friends or uh, you know drinking, uh, are not really good things. Mm. But since I met her, I en I you know began enjoying you know uh, playing or traveling and you know everything that happens in my life. Mm. Mm. So after you met Paula and were her interpreter, um, mm. how did you continue to be involved with Gestalt therapy? What have you been doing with Gestalt for these 30 years? Mm. Um, well, I had, uh, well, before I uh, met Paula, I uh, already started working as a counselor. Mm -hmm. Mm. And um, so, uh, with gestalt therapy, I, you know, uh, my style uh, changed uh, from uh, Rogerian counseling to gestalt therapy, and um, you know, um, after I met Paula, well, actually, I didn't uh, had um, you know uh, official training for gestalt therapy. Hmm. But uh, those three or four years um, as an interpreter to Paula, uh, I think it was the best uh, training for me. Hmm. Uh, because one thing is that, you know, I didn't have any uh, time to uh, think. Hmm. I was just interpreting uh, from uh, English to Japanese and uh, Japanese to English, right? 
so everything went through me, you know. Mm. So uh, without thinking, you know, things came into my body. Mm -hmm. mm. So I, I think that was the best way to learn Gestalt therapy. Mm -hmm. Yes, we met when I was your interpreter, so <laughs> I understand what yeah. you mean. Thank mm -hmm. you. So what have you done then? Have you been working in private practice, teaching? What is your special interest within Gestalt? Um, well, teaching is interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I have some uh, three or four training courses. And also I do uh, uh, personal counseling. Mm -hmm. That's what I was doing. Uh, counseling an hour ago and um, it went very good okay. so um, I was really happy mm -hmm. um, so both are interesting and also uh, group workshop uh, group workshops for clients mm -hmm. um, yeah well, everything in gestalt therapy interests me mm. okay um, another question is, do you feel like you were part of a Gestalt community? Does that phrase mean anything to you? Uh, we will say that again, please. Mm -hmm. A Gestalt community. Do you feel like you're part of a community of Gestalt therapists? Um, that's an interesting question. <laughs> well, um, I was... Um, founding member of J, uh, JAGT, Japanese Association for Gestalt Therapy, and now I'm thinking of quitting it. Mm. Um, and, well, uh, the reason is that, you know, um, I am not interested in being in a group. Mm. Well, I like, you know, the people uh, in JHGT, hmm. um, but um, I feel a sort of um, hmm, what, I, I, I don't remember the right English word, but um, I'm not, I don't feel free in the, you know, the organ organization. Hmm. Hmm. And internationally, like internationally, do you feel connected or disconnected from the Gestalt community? Um, well, not really connected. Mm. Well, um, um, I joined AAGT uh, uh, mm, conference uh, four times. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, Manchester in England was the first, I don't know, uh, yeah, it was the first time, and then Philadelphia, and then, no, three times, and Puebla. Mm -hmm. mm. But then I lost interest in joining the uh, conferences. Mm -hmm. mm. So, um, I'm rather disconnected. Yes. Is there a particular reason? Do you think it's just personal interest or is there something that you feel keeps you distant? Well, um, there is no um, particular reason, but um, I like working with my uh, training trainees or I like being with my uh, counseling clients. Mm -hmm. mm. And I enjoy you know uh, those things much more than you know being with the uh, connecting with uh, organization okay that's fair i'm just curious um so another question is within gestalt what have you found to be your greatest challenges either as a therapist as a student or as a teacher what has really challenged you yeah um, what I challenge and what I enjoy is, you know, uh, encountering something new. 
Mm-hmm. You know, every every moment gives me something something new, and that's exciting and challenging mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and interesting. It's fun. Mm-hmm. It is. So, there, is there anything in particular that you have difficulty with, or is it just different and new? Uh, well, a lot of difficulties. Hmm. You know, um, meeting something new is always difficult, but mm-hmm. exciting. And when I, you know, um, I think, you know, um, I do a lot of good job and, you know, uh, in meeting uh, something new and experiencing it and uh, connecting with it and, you know, uh, uh, contacting with it. Mm. So, um, it's really uh, difficult and challenging, but I feel good about it. And I guess on the other side of that is probably what you would say is one of your more fulfilling or satisfying experiences within Gestalt. Is there a particular wow? Well, no, the answer is the same, you know, the challenging and difficulties and, you know, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have any favorite stories or favorite moments from your Gestalt experiences? Ah, uh, well, well, mm, well if, if you ask me that, um, the, uh, an hour ago, hmm, that's the uh, most impressive uh, event for me. But uh, if you ask me that tomorrow, the answer might, might be the same, you know. Mm-hmm. The one, uh, the client I met today, mm-hmm. uh, the experience with uh, he or uh, she is the best experience. Yeah. Okay, it's interesting. Um, so another question is, I mean, even if you're, you sound very much in the present moment, what would you like to be doing in the future with Gestalt or and where do you think Gestalt therapy can go in the future? Okay. Um, the Gestalt therapy, uh, I or you know Japanese uh, colleagues are doing, was a sort of a classical type of Gestalt therapy, um, like you know um, using empty chairs and asking. Uh, what are your fingers saying and things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now the uh, uh, corona epidemic changed everything mm-hmm. with us yeah. uh, we don't uh, see clients uh, we don't uh, uh, meet you know in the workshop mm-hmm. but now I do you know, uh, counselings and workshops online. Mm-hmm. Mm. Then uh, we cannot use empty chairs anymore. So uh, we, uh, or I had to, you know, shift from uh, uh, works with empty chairs to uh, mm, in a dialogical way. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it was a big change for me. Mm. Um, relational dialogic uh, approach uh, is not something that we had uh, experience. Mm. Um, but still, you know, um, those are the same things. So the shift was not difficult for me. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the 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 um, your question uh, the future of gestalt therapy is going to be um, something that uh, we you know call at gestalt therapy, but you know uh, 
it can be gestalt therapy and it can be um, uh, focusing and it, it can be Rogerian um, counseling and it go, uh, those um, you know, uh, seemingly different uh, way of uh, contacting people will be in you know, one approach the same things mm. well I um, we had um, Robert Resnick to Japan in January mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, he demonstrated his way of working and um, my wife is specialized in focusing and she says when uh, she uh, when she saw him working, oh, it is um, um, what is it? A sort of a fo way of focusing, you know. Um, tr what is? It? I don't remember the uh, the right name, but you know. And she f she felt it was focusing. Mm -hmm. And when I think uh, Rosalian people. Uh, see him working, uh, they will say, oh, it's Rogerian counseling. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, all those things will uh, get together and, you know, mm. Mm. Uh, and will be the same thing. Mm. You don't think so? I don't know. I mean, in some countries, the, there is such a big fight to make Gestalt therapy legal and academic and research and to really define it and it sounds like for you it's kind of like oh everybody can get together and we can do good work um, All right. All right. Yeah. yeah that that sounds it sounds like a different much not simple but less complicated approach i kind of like that answer actually it's right. it sounds more natural yeah, well, actually, you know, um, uh, being with people, uh, clients, well, um, you know, we don't work with a client uh, from theory, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, here in their experience. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, um, the difference in theories and, you know, uh, different differences in approach uh doesn't make any um you know difference <laughs> hmm. quite possibly quite possibly depending on what the person needs mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. right yeah mm. Mm. so who, who, who i am is my approach hmm. that's true Okay. Uh, I'm wondering, is there anything else that you would add that you think you'd like to say more about yourself as a person or anything in the way that you work? Hmm. Well, as a person, um, well, uh, as I said, I'm 69 years old now. Hmm. I'm getting on to 70 and 80 and 90. And, you know, um, for example, uh, when I see Bob Resnick, he's 82, he said. Right. And, um, yeah, when I went to uh, was it in Philadelphia? Uh, I met um, uh, Irving Polster, mm -hmm. mm, and he said he was ninety-two or three mm -hmm. at that time. Mm. Mm -hmm. And all those guys. He just finished another book. <laughs> um, all those people are as you know, as old, you know, I mean, as young as I am. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. So, um, uh, meeting those people, I feel that, you know, age is nothing. Mm. Mm. 
um, well, I'll just, you know, getting on as um, what do you say? No. Um, if I, you know, um, even if I get older, hmm, I don't think it will affect me. Hmm. I will just, you know, um, enjoy my uh, living as much as I can with my physical condition. Mm. Um, it's natural that, you know, my physical condition will get uh, worse and worse. Mm, probably. <laughs> but, you know, um, the, the, uh, how much I, I enjoy my life wouldn't be affected by it. Mm. Mm, that's my... Um, that's my hope, and, um, and I think I go on living that way. Mm. That sounds like a, a clear decision that you've made. Hmm. Oh, is there anything else? Um, although Although I am uh, disconnected, I mean, uh, uh, I don't uh, join uh, AAGT or uh, JAGT. Mm. I just um, hope that get gestalt therapy um, will go on developing, and uh, I am part of you know gestalt uh, disconnected community. <laughs> I'm a part of yes, you know. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's interesting that you say you see yourself as disconnected, um, and I know in part it's because of language. You're one of the people that those of us who speak English are more easily able to connect to, sure. but a lot of people mention you, and a lot of people are aware of you. So oh. I think there is a part of the community that feels connected to you, whether you feel connected to it or not, but. Mm. I mean, I, I remember you very clearly from meeting mm. in Puebla for two days, mm. and I decided that I would really like to have this conversation. So I appreciate your time. Mm. And mm. I guess, do you have anything else to add, or should we leave it here? Yeah, um, I'm uh, very happy to hear you say that you know our people remember me, and you remember me, and I'm happy about this mm -hmm. and, mm, and I'm happy seeing you now mm, so um, at this moment is a good part of my life mm. so let's leave it here okay thank you